What's up, everyone? I hope you're having a wonderful day. I wanted to make this quick video based on something that I saw on social media on earlier this week, and I wanted to address what was said in this particular video. It was a video of DMX. He posted a Bible study that he did on his Instagram live page or feed rather. But um, there were some things that he said uh, that and one particular thing that I wanted to address. So if you want to watch it, you can go over to YouTube. And what I did was I just did a search for DMX Bible study and there'll be a number of uh, videos that come up. But the one I chose was the one that was about uh, 13 minutes and 26 seconds, right under 14 minutes of DMX uh, having a Bible study. And uh, it's a real easy read or listen to. And he talked about a number of things, but I just want to address um, one particular thing that he said. Reports say that there were over 14,000 people that were watching this particular Bible study that he had. His topics range from um, talking about the will of God. He talked about some friends that had recently died. Uh, and he read from the book of Ecclesiastes, uh, primarily from chapter number three, where it talks about to everything there is a season uh, or to everything under heaven there is a time and a season. So he read that particular chapter. And then what he did, he gave a invitation to know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And so there were some things that he said again, and it's just when it concerns his invitation to Christ, I want to just give a little clarity because there were so many people watching and there, there may have been some hearts that were very sincere that want to know Jesus as Lord and Savior. But I wanted to address one thing that he said. And so around the 740 mark is when he does it. So if you watch it, you can listen all the way through or around the 740, seven minute and 40 second mark. He says, look, if you don't if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior and you want to, this is what you do. Real simple. He says, say what I say. And then uh, he says, hey, tell the Lord, look, I'm a sinner. I repent of my sins and I want to make you Lord and Savior of my life, and that's it. And I think it's very important to understand that whenever a person desires to give their life to Jesus, that's a good thing, first and foremost, because if you want to have a relationship with God, the Bible teaches that Jesus is the way. There, there You'll hear a number of different ways to try to get to God, but the Bible teaches that he is the way. I want you to notice what the Bible says in John 14 and 6. Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So Jesus is the only way that we can make it to heaven. If I want to stay out of hell, I need to make Jesus my Lord and Savior. And again, this is something that that God desires. God wants us to give uh, our lives to him. But it is our it's our choice. I want to read this real quickly just so you can understand. First Timothy two, three. And let's just read verses three and four. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior. Notice who desires all men to be saved. And to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to, to be testified in due time. I remember when I was uh, younger, I gave my life to the Lord at 19. And uh, I used to hear people say, you want to be saved? You want to give your life to Jesus? And, and to be honest with you, I didn't even know what, what that meant. <laughs> I didn't know what it meant to want to be saved. And so um, I did learn uh, to be saved simply means to be saved from the penalty of sin. 
See, the Bible says the wages of sin is death. And so Jesus died for our sins. He paid the penalty for our sins so we don't have to die in sin. We don't have to die in our sin because Jesus paid, he paid the price. And so when I accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, uh, I'm accepting what he did here on earth for us. And then I commit to following him. See, he's not just Savior, but he should also be Lord. So I should not only allow him to save me from my sins, but people often leave out he needs to be Lord also. So whatever he tells me to do, I'm going to do. And so he uses a term called repentance when he says, if you want to know Jesus, repent of your sins. And see, a lot of people think to make Jesus Lord and Savior, Lord, just forgive me of my sins. But see, that word repentance is a biblical term that simply means to have a change of heart. Or to turn. So I was living in sin. I was lying. I was I was hoeing around. I, I was doing just a whole bunch of different things in my life. And I knew I was not right. And see, James said in the Bible, sin is when a man knows to do right, but he does not do it. To him it is, it is sin. And so if I continued to practice sin, I would die in sin, and then I would lift up my eyes in hell for eternal or eternity, and that's eternal death. And so when a person repents, again, they have a change of heart or they turn. I just didn't ask God to forgive me, and then I go back to practicing sin. No, no, no. Now I have to strive to live according to the word of God, because just people live by faith or the word of God. So repent means to turn. So now my lifestyle should be different. I didn't, I didn't go back to lying. I didn't go back to cussing. I didn't go back to the club. I didn't go back to hoeing. I didn't go back to doing this, that, and the other. Now I had a change of heart. And the Bible teaches that's true repentance. Because there are a lot of people, Lord, if you just save me this time, I change my life. And then two, three weeks later, they're back doing what they used to do. I want to read this scripture and then I'm going to be done. Notice what the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 7 and 10. For godly sorrow produces repentance. Notice, leading to salvation. Not to be regretted, but the sorrow of the world produces death. So when a person truly repents, according to this verse, notice they have godly sorrow and that leads to salvation. A person has to be to the point to where they feel awful that they have offended God. Lord, I'm wrong. I knew better, but I didn't choose better. I've been wrong. I've been doing all these girls wrong, Lord. <laughs> I, I've been talking wrong, thinking wrong, and acting wrong. And you and you have your your heart is pricked. And 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 Peter was preaching to some folks in the book of Acts, and he, their heart was pricked. And they was like, "Well, what do we do? How how do what do we do to be saved?" And the first thing he said was, "Repent." So you just don't ask God to forgive you, but you have a change of heart. And my prayer is, if you seriously desire to give your life to Jesus, remember it starts with, it starts with repentance. And repentance means, again, to have a change of heart. I hope you've uh, taken heed to what I've said. And uh, until next time, may God bless you.